Hi, my name is Matt, and this is my YouTube presentation for Bio 355, the basic life cycle of a T4 bacteriophage. This right here is a regular E. coli cell. And on the cell surface, you have lipopolysaccharide proteins. The T4 comes in contact with the cell and scans the surface of the E. coli looking for an optimal penetration site. This is usually where the cell membrane and cell wall are close together. When the T4 finds a good site, the phage contracts its tail sheath and injects its viral DNA. The viral DNA then transcribes and translates early viral proteins by using the host cell's biosynthetic machinery. One of the first proteins made is an enzyme that degrades the host's DNA. Viral DNA is protected because it contains a modified cytosine not recognized by the enzyme. The CH2OH group is responsible for that. The host DNA is then degraded. The phage DNA replaces the host genome and uses nucleotides from the degraded host DNA to synthesize new viral proteins and more viral DNA through more transcription and translation using the host cell's biosynthetic machinery. The host cell produces three sets of capsid proteins and assembles them into phage tails, tail fibers, and polyhedral heads. The polyhedral heads are then filled with copies of the viral DNA. The phage components then spontaneously assemble into what is called a virion, or an infectious particle. To get the virions cut out of the E. coli, a lysozyme that's specified by the viral genome digests the cell wall. Or another way to do it is that there could be such a buildup of the T4 bacteriophage, the cell will eventually lyse or erupt. releasing more and more T4 bacteriophage to go on to infect more E. coli.